Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to perform a valve adjustment on a Honda S2000. This has been the most requested DIY video so I really hope you enjoy this one. Before you start this DIY you want to make sure that the engine temperature is under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason the engine must be cold is because the temperature can affect the expansion of metal components and it can throw off your measurements. I also want to point out that you will need two special tools a set of bent feeler gauges, and a 10 millimeter valve adjustment tool. You can find links to both of these in the video description below. Once the engine is at room temperature, you'll need to remove the valve cover. You can find a video that I made on how to do this linked below. Once the valve cover is off, you'll need a little extra room to work with. Remove the fuel rail cover and then unclip the injector wiring harness from the fuel rail. Now you want to set up cylinder 1 so that it is at top dead center. I could make an entire video explaining what top dead center is, but for the purposes of this video, all you really have to know is that when a piston is at top dead center, the valves can be properly adjusted. You can tell when a cylinder is at top dead center because the exhaust camshaft lobes will point to 11 o'clock, and the intake camshaft lobes will point to 2 o'clock. You can also tell when a cylinder is at top dead center by looking at the timing marks on the cam gears. For cylinder 1, the timing marks on the cam gears will be pointed directly towards each other. With the car in neutral, use a 19mm wrench to turn the crankshaft clockwise so that cylinder 1 is set to top dead center. With the piston that you were adjusting at top dead center, you can now measure the valve clearances using your bent feeler gauges. The valve clearance in this case is the space between the valve stem and the adjusting screw. For the intake side, the clearance should be 0.21mm to 0.25mm, and on the exhaust side, it should be between 0.25mm and 0.29mm. What you want to do is take the feeler gauge that is sized within the valve's clearance that you are adjusting and try to insert it between the valve stem and the adjusting screw. If the feeler won't fit, you know that the valve clearance is too tight and needs to be adjusted. If it does fit, you want to slide it back and forth and feel how tight the clearance is. Ideally, you want the feeler to feel snug with slight drag between the valve stem and the adjusting screw. If the feeler gauge has no drag at all, you want to adjust the valve clearance so it is a bit tighter. To adjust the valve, place the valve adjustment tool onto the lock nut for the valve that you wish to adjust. Make sure the tool is sitting around the lock nut and then lower the flat head until it is sitting correctly on the adjusting screw. Loosen the lock nut by turning the handle counterclockwise. You want to do this while holding the adjusting screw in place with the flathead driver to ensure that the clearance doesn't change. Once the lock nut is loose, you can now spin the flathead in order to loosen or tighten the valve clearance. The adjustment screw should only need a fraction of a turn in order to adjust the clearance to spec. When you have finished turning the adjustment screw, you'll need to tighten the lock nut by turning the handle clockwise, all while holding the adjustment screw in place with the flathead driver. Once you're happy with the adjustment, torque the lock nut to 14 foot-pounds. After you're finished with cylinder 1, you'll need to rotate the crankshaft 180 degrees to get the next cylinder to top dead center. The next cylinder to reach top dead center will be cylinder 3, then cylinder 4, and then cylinder 2 in that order. Repeat steps 4 and 5 for each of these cylinders after you get them each to top dead center. Once all the valves are finally adjusted, you can begin by putting things back together. Make sure all the lock nuts are torqued and remove the 19mm wrench from the crankshaft bolt if it's still there. Replace the fuel rail cover and replace the injector wiring harness back onto the fuel rail. Finally, reinstall the valve cover. You can find a video that I made on how to do this linked below. And that's it! Start up the car to ensure that everything is operating normally. If you encounter a misfire, double check all your electrical connections and make sure everything is bolted down correctly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button and leave a comment for any DIY you'd like to see in the future.